PK, congratulations. Premier's back-to-back -back years. It's a big group hug. A lot of excitement when the final whistle went off. What were your emotions at that point? Yeah, um, I, think it's, I think it's been a big year, uh, excluding the final series. You know, um, Obviously, that what we've had to deal with, and I'm, I'm not just saying not just us, but um, a, a lot of clubs and back-to-back -back games and... You know, you get put in situations that you've never been put in before because of, you know, the, the COVID situation. You know, you go away to Asia, you don't lose a game, you get 12 points, you don't qualify for the next round, which we always wanted to. So there, there's a lot of emotions that go in there. And then, you know, we, we come here and obviously, we, I think first half, we, we played really well. Um, maybe didn't control the game as much as we liked. And then Wellington get a goal and, you know, again, we're, we show character. So I think it was just a build up of maybe nine months worth, um, even though we still got a long way to go. But um, I think it was a build up and, you know, a satisfaction of, you know, some of the things that we've had to encounter this year. Do all those obstacles that you had to overcome, the fact that it, you had to come down to the last game of the season to do it, beating your rivals, did it, does this one feel more special than last year? Um, <sighs> I, I, I don't know. It depends how you look at it. You know, um, last year again we were faced with the unknown as well. Um, uh, but I, I think uh, this year, when you know when, what we've had to deal with in terms of, you know, we're going to play a, a big Champions League um, tournament, um, and I think that the boys were actually really disappointed, and to get the rewards that they've got tonight, which there's still a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, again, I think it's a build up of emotion just to say, you know what, that we we did something that we, we set out to do um, and now we need to, you know, get ourselves clear and, you know, go again. Well, yeah, back to back premierships though, it's, you know, it's clearly a marker of sustained excellence and, and dominance. How pleasing is it that it wasn't just a flash in the pan or anything like that? You've, you've done it two years in a row, you haven't had a little slip down the order or anything? Yeah, look, it's uh, for me. It's again. I look at the performances um, and the way we've gone about playing our football. Um, and again, you know, uh, sometimes things don't work, but it's a persistence of keep trying to improve, and that's what the group have done. Again, for me, it's nothing. It's all credit to the players. They've had to overcome adversity. They've had to overcome. Uh, you know, maybe some public criticism. They've had to co overcome COVID injuries. They've had to come, you know, overcome a lot. Um, so it, it, it's all down to the team um, and their desire, you know, to keep working and pushing, and um, and that's what they've done. Was there ever a moment where you, you guys thought it might waver at all? Like just with all those different challenges, especially the COVID, where you had big yeah. chunks of players that we thought. Geez, it might be a, a step too far yeah, to do it again. I mean, like when I said when I was in, um, you know, the AFC, the championships just before, like you go to the unknown, you, you actually don't know. So we, we adapted really well. And again, I'm the first one to admit sometimes we got it wrong, you know. <laughs> but the only way to improve is to look at that and, you know, try to see how we can improve. And, you know, again, along the way, along the journey, um, we, we did that. PK, obviously the fast start today. You got two goals in the opening 10 minutes. How important was that in terms of setting the tone? Because obviously against Perth, you conceded early, but obviously you had all those chances and they weren't just go they weren't going in. But today, they went in those first few minutes and you're able to get that gap at the start. Yeah, look, I think again, with Perth, I think we had the, we had better chances than tonight. Um, actually, like proper clear cut chances. So um, it was different. Uh, you know, we scored off two set pieces, um, and you, you know that you know everything is okay, but. I was still, you know, not happy with the way we were playing you know, in the first half and trying to penetrate. Uh, and the second half, when they score, you know, a again, it, it, you shift into a, sometimes a mode of, okay, we need to hold on. But for us, you know, I wanted to keep pushing. And for me, it's, it, it was the character that the players showed tonight um, under duress and, again, what they've had to experience. And again, the, I'll make it clear, it's, it's our, our club, yes, but. You know, it's credit, to, I think, to all the clubs and coaches that have had to deal with certain scenarios, you know, this year because um, it, it's been a, a challenging one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Taras Kamulka as well, in terms of his game today, two, basically two assists in the first little bit with the two corners as well. I guess, how have you seen his development this year? Because obviously he's wor had to work his way into the team. He's made the most of Aiden's absence today. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, Taras has come along a long way. Um, you know, he still needs a lot of work. You know, he still needs to train hard. 
Um, there's some things that, you know, again, he needs to fix tonight, but, you know, when it needed to a bit of, uh, you know, concentration and focus, um, he delivered when needed. So um, I was happy with him, um, you know, uh, but again, he needs to keep, again, performing and improving uh, each day. Hey, Kate, you mentioned before about trying some things this season that didn't quite work out as well as you hoped and learning from them and improving on them. What were some of those adaptions that you think have been important throughout this season? <laughs> Yeah, look, look, off the top of my head, you know, we've we've had to play with nine players out. Uh, we've had internationals. <laughs> um, we've had people with injuries. Um, we've tried to work uh, maybe, you know, a couple of players in different positions. Um, and, and again, that's just the top of my head. If I'm not sure if I have more time to think, I could think of more. But again, it's just, uh, you know, three games, a w uh, you know, sometimes three games a week. You know, that's something that no one's ever had to deal with in this competition that I don't think, maybe I'm wrong, maybe in the past, I don't know, but you know, you, you, you're backing up, backing up, and with squads that we have, you know, you, you're limited, and that's with everyone. So, you know, the, the amount of uh, duress that we put the players on, you know, credit goes to them, because not only physically have they done well, but mentally um, they, they've done really well. But again, that's, nothing's done yet. You know, they've got a lot, a lot of work to do. And, and I'm saying that's my team. You mentioned internationals, and of course, last finals campaign, you lost a host of Socceroos. This campaign, you're keeping all of them. They're going to be in the squad. That must be a much more preferable scenario in the last season for you as a coach. Yeah, but when you look at it, you know, the, the times that you haven't had them, um, you know, sometimes, you know, if I, if I can think, I think we played against West United, we didn't have them, and I think there was another time where we didn't have them. Um, you know, and I think, I think we lost to West United. So... Look, it's, it's again, it's one of those things that you look at at the end of it. Um, but again, even that, you know, the, the team have adapted really well and players have, you know, had an opportunity to come in, you know, and to play and, you know, hopefully they grow from, from this. Is it enjoyable knowing you get to go into the finals and as I'm sure it's the same for a couple of other clubs as well, not losing those guys? One, just because obviously what they can do, but for the league itself, obviously, you want to have the biggest and best sort of out, up there and firing. Yeah, look, I think as if you look at, you know, um, yeah, football in general, you know, you want the best players um, to play in your league, in the A-League, in the English Premier League, you know, the City R, League One, like, like, you want the best players and, you know, um, it, it's it's better for us as a sport if we can have the, the, the top players at all the clubs play. You know, when it goes missing, or when they go missing due to, for whatever reason, you know, we'll say international breaks, you know, uh, it, it's hard because you want this product to grow. You know, I want the game in Australia to grow. Um, and it's, it's better for us if we can have the best players, the best coaches always available. Yeah, uh, Patrick, congratulations on a great achievement. How important or how, how much of an impact for City and how important for City is to win this title when Melbourne victory are actually decent? I mean, have they, has that really been a big spur? Because they were terrible last year and you hammered them so many times. But they're actually proper opposition this year. Does it make it even sweeter to beat them by a point to the championship? Uh, to, to be honest with you, I don't really, I don't really think lo lo like that. Um, I just focus on you know, the controllables, and that's you know um, controlling uh, what I can do here. A anything else out of that um, circle, uh, you know, I, I can't do nothing about. Uh, I really meant you know for the good of the game, actually, in Melbourne, and for you as a club to have credible opposition in your own backyard. Was it an extra spur this year? Uh, no, no, that's you know I think uh, I think every team. Uh, is a good team, uh, regardless of where they sit on the ladder. I don't think the ladder sometimes justifies, you know, if a good team or a bad team if, where they sit. So, you know, I think in this competition, you have uh, uh, every team uh, and every club uh, are good. So, you know, um, everyone's a tough opposition. Just to bounce off that, was it enjoyable doing it, knowing they'd packed a good section of the stands with victory fans, like watching, you know, supporting Wellington? No. I mean, you, you played against them as well, Patrick. It must yeah. have been enjoyable. Thing look, to, to be honest with you, I, look, I, I need I concentrate on what 
we have and you know if they want to come and watch the game they can come and watch the game everyone's entitled to come and watch a game for me it's concentrating on on, on us all right just very quickly Jamie McLaren's just won a golden boot for the third year in a row the fourth time in all he's a crucial player for you is he not is he respected enough by the football community pundits and people in this country for what he does in this league look I think you need to ask the relevant people um, yeah. I'm asking you, uh, you're his boss. yeah I might be biased um, yeah you guys right the stories, uh, the pundits, I don't really care what they think. Um, the fans, as long as he performs for, for the team, um, that's what counts. And, you know, um, a, a, as, a, as a goal scorer, you know, sometimes when you go without goals, there's always a question mark or, you know, something like that. But, you know, one thing Jamie has shown, um, and, and good players do that, is consistency. And it's consistent over three years and you know sometimes we need to sit back and have a look and you know and say you know sometimes it's to people well done because uh, you know we always can't be negative we have to actually look back and say you know someone achieved something really good there or you know someone did really well um, and consistently he's done that for three years so I'm very happy for him.